Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on a topic called drug properties. So instead of saying it as drug properties, we can tell as the drug candidate properties. So this comes in a drug discovery. During discovery and development of a drug, they will check for certain properties. Which properties do they check? There are multiple properties. Under that, these are the properties which are important. I am going to explain these properties in an outline. The first thing is activity. They will check whether the drug is acting on a given target. We are choosing different targets based on the diseases. Majority of the targets are proteins or enzymes. Whether the given drug is acting on the given specific target or not, they will be identifying this based on this activity parameter. Next comes the selectivity. The amount of affinity between the drug candidate and the target is called as selectivity. They will also, if the drug is not selective, even though if, if it is not selective, some may show activity with less selectivity also. They will, there should be some optimum selectivity and optimum activity. This will be the first point that they will consider during the drug discovery. Next comes the solubility of the drug. The drug molecule, once it is formulated, it should be having particular solubility so that it will be dissolving and disintegrating in the body. So, after the solubility, we will consider these four parameters which are very important. The first one is absorption, next one is distribution of the drug, third one is metabolism, fourth one is excretion. Recently, one more parameter is also being checked, that is toxicities are also being considered here toxicities. So first one is absorption. How the drug is being absorbed? It depends on the route of administration. So for example, if we are given a drug through orally, we will check absorption through the gastric route, how much it is being absorbed in the small intestine. Depending on this, we will check the absorption. We will check absorption using plasma concentration curves. We can even check distribution also through this pathway. And after distribute during distribution, what we will study? How the drug is being distributed? How much it is staying in plasma? Is it binding to any plasma proteins? Plasma proteins like alpha acid glycoprotein or albumin. The drugs will be binding to these proteins in plasma. So during distribution phase, we will be checking how much the drug is binding, how much it is in the free phase. The amount of drug that is staying freely in the plasma is important to show its efficacy. Next one is metabolism. How the drug is being metabolized? Is it being metabolized through liver or is there any other pathway that the drug is being metabolized? After this metabolism, what are the metabolites that are forming? And if the metabolites that are formed, do these metabolites also have any activity or are these metabolites showing any toxicity? These parameters also will be assessed during the drug discovery development. Next one is excretion. Through which route it is being excreted? As we all know, it may be excreted in bile, it may be excreted even in during the inhalation. So there are different pathways. Sorry, inhalation is exhalation. During exhalation, the drug may excrete it through exhalation pathways also in air. Next one is toxicity. We will assess uh, acute and chronic toxicity studies both in animal models and human models. Acute are usually less than six months or three months, whereas chronic are greater than six months will be considered as chronic toxicity studies. Next comes bioavailability. How much drug is bioavailable? For example, we have developed a certain dosage form. Let us think a tablet has been given to the patient. But if the tablet is containing 100 milligrams of the drug, what is the amount of that that is actually entering into the blood? This will be considering as bioavailability. For dosage forms like IV, bioavailability will be 100%. Since they are be they will be given directly into blood, they will be having 100% bioavailability. Whereas other routes of administration will, there will be a difference in this bioavailability. We will assess this bioavailability also for the drug product. Next one is adverse drug reaction. This will be assessed during clinical trials. Stability of the drug product. How much stable the drug product is? Because the drug may be stored for one year, two years, depend on the expiry date we will be storing. So we will need to assess the expiry date and we need to see whether it is stable or not. Let us think for example, there are suspensions and other types of liquid dosage forms where there is chance of flocculation, sedimentation. We will assess all these parameters in stability also. The next parameter is blood brain barrier. The blood brain barrier is a barrier that is present around the brain. The brain has certain membranes around its uh, location. Certain drugs can enter these uh, 
cross this barrier and enter into brain and show its action on the central nervous system. So we will be assessing if our drug is showing any effect on central nervous system through crossing the blood brain barrier. Next one is PGP. This is a PGP is an efflux pump. Usually it's present in different locations. This is even present in our intestine. Some drugs are being eliminated. For example, a drug has been absorbed into our intestine. There this PGP will be present. Sometimes this PGP, what will it do is the drug that has been absorbed like this, this PGP will efflux it outside. This will be excreted by the body. So though the drug has been given, though it is having absorption, if this PGP is effluxing, it is a glycoprotein, if it is effluxing the drug, there will not be any drug within the body. So this will be excreted. So it is of no use even if you give the drug. So we should need how much activity this PGP is doing on the drug. Next, shelf life. Shelf life is uh, similar to stability. Next one, uh, shelf life will be assessed using different studies like uh, freeze thaw cycling will also be used here. Next is dosage form. Which dosage form would be better? Usually oral dosage, every company tries to make their drug in oral dosage forms because it is more palatable and most acceptable form is oral dosage form. Usually every company will try to make it in oral dosage form in that it maximum tries to make it a tablet. If it is not possible, they will go for other forms. And depending on the action that is required in, for example, certain drugs may require fast action. Further, they may change the dosage form. But usually, every company will try as much as possible to make it into a overall tablet dosage form. Next one is mechanism of action. This is very important because we should know the clear and exact mechanism of action of a drug. Low cost. For economical reasons, the drug companies will try to decrease the cost as much as possible. Next one will be ease of manufacturing. Though if we having a drug candidate, if we are unable to manufacture it on a large scale, it will not be able to reach the market. So we will even test how the drug is to be manufactured. What are the steps that to be followed? How can we manufacture this drug at low cost is also a parameter. Like this is all some of the important parameters. Thank you.